Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the lost coin. People loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Last week, we learned that Dr. Luke devoted the 15th chapter of his gospel to three powerful parables about being lost. The first parable is about a lost sheep, the second about a lost coin, and the third was about a lost son. Luke begins the chapter by saying that Jesus was so well liked by tax collectors and sinners that they gladly came to hear him speak. When the Pharisees and the scribes saw that Jesus welcomed sinners, they were offended. Dr. Luke recorded that they grumbled and they were saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them, Luke chapter 15 and verse 2. Of course, they said it loud enough for Jesus to hear their protest. Jesus responded to their complaints by linking together these three parables with one clear message. Jesus told the story of a shepherd who discovered that one of his sheep was missing. He left the remaining 99 in an open field to find the one that was missing. And when he found the lost one, he carried it back to the flock on his shoulders. We learn that Jesus fulfilled prophetic words of the prophets Ezekiel and Isaiah by finding the lost sheep and gently caring for them. In today's parable, the lost coin, Jesus continued addressing the complaint of the scribes and the Pharisees who thought that he was too friendly with tax collectors and sinners. Worse than that, Jesus ate with them. It was bad enough that Jesus had compared the scribes and Pharisees to a shepherd. Now Jesus compares them to a woman. He said, Oh, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? Luke chapter 15 and verse 8. Those of us who have traveled in the East know that part of a lady's dowry can include a headband that has coins attached to it. The head covering, as special as it is, would only be worn on very, very special occasions. Perhaps in preparation for such an event, this lady checked to make sure that her head covering was ready to be worn. To her dismay, she discovered that one of the coins was missing. Now, one reason to support this idea is that Jesus used the word drachma, a Greek silver coin, to describe the lost coin rather than the common Roman denarius that was the coin of circulation in those days. It is possible that the headpiece had been handed to her, down to her from her ancestors. What is clear is that the coin was highly valued by the lady. The coin was worth more than its value in silver, and there are some things that money cannot buy or replace. It is interesting to note that while both the sheep and the coin were lost, the lost coin could cry hoping that the shepherd would hear him and be rescued. There was nothing the lost coin could do to be found. The coin just had to wait until it was discovered. Now, although the coin was lost, it did not lose its value. The value of the coin was protected by the image of the emperor it bore. So what does the lady do to find her lost coin? Jesus said she lights a lamp and sweeps the house and seeks diligently until she finds it. One translation puts it this way. She scours the house, looking in every nook and cranny until she finds it. In those days, 
Most homes had a mud floor or paving stones with mud in between the stones. It was easy for a coin to get lost in the cracks. The lady searched her house diligently by sweeping it carefully. Now, to this very day, archaeologists count on being able to find coins that have been lost in the floors of old buildings to date when that building was last used. To her delight, she finds the coin and invites her neighbors to celebrate with her, saying, Rejoice with me, I have found the coin I had lost. Luke chapter 15 and verse 9. What do we learn from this story? The sheep was lost outside, but the coin was lost inside. In the Bible, the people of God are often referred to as the house of God. In the parable of the lost sheep, we discover God's love for people that are lost outside of the house of God. In the parable of the lost coin, we discover God's love for people who are lost inside the house of God. People are lost in religion. They're lost in churches. They're lost in families. People lose their way through bad habits and behavior. They lose their way through insults and injuries inflicted by others. And while they are lost, they still have incredible value because the image of God is stamped into every human being. Jesus used these parables to bring us to the central purpose of his life. Jesus himself disclosed his purpose to a tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus, who lived in the city of Jericho. Jesus said the Son of Man, his favorite term, came to seek and to save the lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. The tax collectors and sinners knew they were lost and gladly came to hear Jesus. On the other hand, the scribes and the Pharisees did not think of themselves as being lost at all, but Jesus did. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8 and verse 12. Now, homes in those days were very dark, windows were small, and most people only had one or two very small lamps. It does not matter to Jesus how dark your life has become. There's no amount of darkness that can extinguish the light of Jesus nor his love. Jesus recognizes the image of God on every person. No matter how badly life has scarred you, Jesus can still see the image of God in you. He came to rescue you. And even if you're like the lost coin that cannot cry out for help, he knows where you are. He knows about your lost dreams and failures. And even though you think you're no longer qualified to be loved by God, he still loves you. Jesus wants to give you another chance at life. He knows how to Reverse the damage that has happened to you. Jesus is so loving. He not only came to rescue you, he has the power to change us. Turn to Jesus today. He is ready to save you from being lost. Jesus ended the parable of the lost coin like he ended the parable of the lost sheep. He said, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke chapter 15, verse 10. To repent means to change our mind. We invite you to change your mind about who Jesus is and what he came to do. Believe what Jesus said. I came to seek and to save the lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Our part is to admit we are lost. His part is to save us. And whether you're outside the house of God in a world of danger or inside the house of God in a world of religion, we invite you to turn to Jesus for salvation. 
Thank him for dying for you and your place on the cross. Your next step is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and read the Bible as frequently as you can. David said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. The word of God is a beautiful guide to the steps we need to take in life. If you ask Jesus to save you today, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. I'll send you an electronic Bible in your language. And your decision to follow Jesus will bring great joy to those who are already in heaven. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.